Need to talk to the king, but the guards won't let you past. Or maybe you need to infiltrate a cult to gain information. Or maybe you just want to go to a party that you weren't invited to. All these things and more are possible with the alter ego archetype. So today I'm going to teach you how to go to places that you normally wouldn't be welcome with this archetype. Let's dive in. So the alter ego archetype is all about mimicking roles, but not specific individuals. For example, with this archetype, you could mimic a faceless guard. However, you could not mimic the guard captain specifically. This will allow you to gather some important information using deception rather than stealth. So if you've got high charisma, but not great decks, this may be an archetype for you. The dedication itself does require you to be trained in stealth, which is very interesting, as nothing in the archetype actually requires you to use stealth. However, it's just trained, and almost every character is going to have at least two skills to spare to put in deception and stealth. When you take this archetype, you immediately become an expert in deception. You also get the assume a role activity. There's a lot of text here, but I'm going to try to simplify it for you. Basically, what it is, is you have to spend an hour visually watching someone whose role you want to assume. So if you're wanting to assume the role of a guard, you gotta watch a guard for an hour. You can use magic to achieve this. Once this is done, you must assume the role within three days. Otherwise, you have to study a person for an hour again. But like I said before, it's always a role and not a specific individual. Once you are in this role, you gain a plus one circumstance bonus to deception checks to convince others that you are really a member of that role. You also get to pick one lore skill associated with the role you are trying to impersonate. You get a plus one bonus to that lore skill, and if you're untrained in it, you can use your level as your proficiency bonus. You can be in this role for up to 24 hours or until you start studying a new role. You can also choose to end your impersonation at any time. After the dedication, we've got a level 3 skill feed to talk about, which is brand new from Firebrands. With Weir on the list, if an ally is about to make a deception check to impersonate someone or lie, you can use a reaction to roll society to aid them. In addition to those benefits, the ally can also roll their deception check twice and take the better result if you succeed. Thus, not only can you get yourself into that party you're not invited to, but you may be able to get your allies in as well with this feat. Which is very handy. Next we've got three level four feats to cover. And we're going to start with Change of Face, another archetype skill feat. With this feat, you no longer need a disguise kit to impersonate someone. Instead, simple illusions and transmutations provide the supplies that the kit would. Honestly, I don't think this feat is very good. As by the time you reach level 4, you're going to easily have a disguise kit. And it's going to take you the same amount of time regardless. So more than likely, you're better off picking one of the other level 4 feats that I'm about to cover. Next up is Fake It Till You Make It, a much better feat. Now when you use a sumo role, you can pick any two skills associated with that role in some way. So if you're impersonating a chef, you might choose crafting. If you're untrained in the skills you chose, you can use your level as your proficiency bonus. You also get a plus one bonus to those skills as long as you're in that role. I'm pretty sure this is in addition to the lore skill that you get for assuming the role. This just makes it even harder for someone to find out that you're not really in that role, as you having the skills for the job will make them less suspicious. And finally, for level four feats, we've got another skill feat with In Plain Sights. When you've assumed a role, and you're in an area where that role wouldn't be unusual, then you can roll deception instead of stealth to avoid notice. So like, if you're impersonating a chef in a kitchen, you can roll deception instead of stealth to avoid notice. 
Again, this is pretty great for characters that have high charisma but low dexterity. Plus, there's a pretty nifty combo with this, the Mirror Thaumaturge, and the Catfolk Ancestry. But to see that combo, you guys are going to have to wait until my next teamwork belt. At level 6, we've got Sound Mirror. You can cast Ventriloquism and Silence on Yourself, both as once per day occult spells. You can also cast Ghost Sound as an innate occult cantrip. This feat also makes you train in occult spell attack rolls and DCs. And your key ability score for these spells is Charisma. This is so that if you need to sneak around well in a roll to places where that roll wouldn't be, you're not going to make a sound. And you can make other sounds to lead enemies away, to get past them. What this also means is that you can cast any occult spells you find from magic items such as scrolls. Thus, this feat is very good for sneaking around, but it's also a great teamwork option if you can find the scrolls for the right occult spell. Then we've got another skill feat with Muscle Mimicry. Most of the feats in this archetype are social based, but this one is actually combat based. As a reaction, if an enemy decides to grapple, trip, disarm, shove, or escape, if you do the same thing on your next turn, you can gain a plus one or plus two bonus on the check. Unfortunately, this one is very situational. It ultimately depends on what your enemies want to do and what their DCs are. But this can be very effective if you use it on the right enemy. Whether you take this or not is ultimately going to depend on your campaign, like most skill feats. Now we've got another battle one with Swap Reflections. For two actions, once every ten minutes, if an enemy is near a reflective surface and you can see the reflection, you can force them to make a will saving throw against your class DC or spell DC, whichever is higher. You must also be adjacent to a reflective surface to use this feat. If the target succeeds on their saving throw, then they can swap places with you or pull you toward them, whichever they choose. On a failure, it's the same effect except you get to choose which one happens. On a critical failure, you swap places with them, and they get stuck in their own reflection. This lasts for one minute. However, on each of its turns, it can spend one action to make a will save in order to escape its reflection. In my opinion, this is another pretty situational feat. I mean, if they crit fail, it's awesome. Because then they're always wasting at least one action trying to get out of their reflection. But otherwise, you can use this to get your friend out of sticky situations if they fail. And if they succeed, they may decide to swap places with you anyway. If they succeed, they do have to decide whether or not they swap places with you or pull you toward them. So it's situational, but can be effective. And it is two actions to move up to 120 feet, which is not easy to do. When you get to level 12, you can take Illusory Identity. During your daily preparations, you can select a single badge, page of paper, journal, or something similar to magically invest in. If you do, when you show that item to another creature, they must make a will save against your deception DC. If they quickly succeed, they see the item as blank with nothing on it. If they succeed, they see the basic information you want them to see in a simplistic manner. However, the onlooker's attitude towards you worsens by one step. If they fail, they see what you want them to see with no other penalties. If they quickly fail on the saving throw, they see what you want them to see, and their attitude towards you increases by one step. With this feat, while you can't impersonate a specific person, you can convince others that you are a specific person, by showing them what they believe is the correct papers. This could allow you to get into even more places that you technically shouldn't be. Borrow Memories allows you to cast Mind Probe as an innate spell once a day. If you don't know, Mind Probe allows you to ask a target's mind questions. 
You can ask a question each time you sustain the spell. However, they can attempt to lie to you. But if they quickly fail on their save, they take a minus four to do so. However, this version of Mind Probe works a little bit differently. When you cast a spell on a target that you're studying to assume its role, you can wait to ask your questions until you actually assume the role. You can also sustain the spell at any time, and each time you do so, you can ask one question. This lasts until you ask all ten questions, or until you're no longer assuming that role. And unlike the original version of Mind Probe, you don't need to sustain the spell to extend its duration. And you don't need to be within range to sustain it. Or even have line of effects. Basically, you do need to make sure that whoever you're impersonating doesn't show up where you are. But they don't have to be anywhere near you for you to use this feat. But you do need to sustain the spell each time you want to ask a question. This is another fantastic way of making sure that other people don't see through your impersonation. And lastly, from Firebrands, we have It Was Me All Along. For one action, you can remove your disguise, whether it's magical or mundane. Doing so allows you to stride up to your speed and make a deception check to feint the target. This target must be within 30 feet of you. If you succeed, you gain advantage on your first attack roll against that target this turn. So basically, you surprise the heck out of them and get to feint, making them flat-footed, and if you succeed, advantage on the attack roll as well. Making this probably the best combat feat in this entire archetype. So that's pretty much it for the Alter Ego archetype. However, I don't recommend this archetype for new players. It's very advanced. There are a lot of interactions between these feats and the rules. So you really have to know the rules well in order to play this archetype effectively. And this archetype most definitely is not a combat-focused archetype. It is designed for social situations. But this archetype works extremely well with thaumaturges and rogues. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and check out the links in the description below for my Patreon as well as my Facebook and my Twitter. If you're more interested in blowing stuff up, you can check out this archetype video right here. Thank you guys so much for watching and remember, teamwork is vital.